welcome to the video. Let's see what we have to offer here. I'm doing it a little bit different. Usually I just gather a bunch of clips and do a compilation. But in this case I'm gonna try actually talking about the game even though I have zero charisma and I am really not used to, well, talking like this. But I'll see what I can do. So I've had some mic problems and I had to record my voice over the footage, which is why it might seem awkward at times. But I'll do my best here and uh, give you a look at this here, closed alpha. So what we have here first of all is we have three clans available, the Bruja, Nosferatu and the Toreador. And they all have two archetypes that you can see down here. Uh, each clan has one skill that they every archetype has in common and then they have a passive skill and a active skill that is unique to the archetype that you can see over here at powers for example the Nosferatu one is vanish that you can see here it lets them turn invisible and basically zoom around whereas the archetype skill is Sewer Bomb and the passive skill is Unseen Passage, which allows them to turn semi-invisible when crouching, that you can see there. The uh, Archetype skill, meanwhile, lets them throw a bomb that explodes into gas when approached by enemies, as the text will say. I haven't found it too useful myself, but I'm sure it can be, you know, dangerous in the right hands. Let's see, gonna play the video here. The uh, Prowler archetype of the Nosferatu have Sense the Beast, which leaves this trail on wounded enemies. So they're basically a tracker uh, archetype. They basically set a prey and then they hunt that down. That's more or less the gimmick. Though how well it goes in practice, that all depends as it tends to. The Scouting families, on the other hand, that thing I've seen, it's pretty useful. As you can see, you can you get vision of your enemies. I'm not sure if Vanish actually counters that, but no doubt useful and you wanna avoid being swept up in that. The Bruja, on the other hand, have Soaring Leap as their uh, power. Let's them um, jump around all over the place, double jump even. The Brute in particular have true Grit, which as we can see here, will let them regenerate health when they're not being shot at enough. Uh, slight lag aside, it is undoubtedly useful because you only get healing from blood in this game. So you gotta either feed or you gotta find a blood bag or a blood syringe, which lets you heal from there. But it, it isn't a quick heal, so you gotta be careful even then. The power shock meanwhile pushes enemies back as you can see and leaves them a little bit vulnerable. The Vandal on the other hand have earth shock as you can see here leap forward and crash down. So when you're in the air whether you're jumping around or uh, jumping down from a building you can crash down like you see on the screen there and you push enemies back. I'm not really sure though if the enemies can actually still attack or not and if they can I'm not sure how useful that skill is but there you go the real powerhouse of the Vandal is the fact that they take less damage when they're near an enemy allowing them to get close which is always useful especially in the heat of the moment because enemies are not gonna stand still they're gonna jump all over the place they're gonna activate powers gonna do all kinds of crazy stuff so you gotta have every second on your side the Siren on the Toreador, on the other hand, have Projection Dash. So what happens is they basically set a waypoint and when you activate the power again you can teleport up there instantly. Which is some sort of a celerity power. Which is very useful indeed. And they need it. Kindred Charm is the passive skill of the Siren which makes the mortals friendly. Though I'm not really sure what that actually does. I can only assume it blinds them so you're not causing any masquerade violations and they won't run away or anything if you uh, use 
supernatural powers or start shooting or the likes <coughs> but they will still hurt enemies blinding beauty meanwhile is kinda like the majesty power where it will start blinding enemies and it will also create a damage over time effect that you can see here I haven't really tested this too much because the enemies tend to be really far away there aren't a lot of people who focus on melee attacks in my experience though my experience is limited so take that with a grain of salt the Mius is a support class or support archetype if you prefer the archetype skill rejuvenating voice makes them stand still from what I can tell and they start healing their allies ever so gradually which in a game where healing is kind of limited and uh, comes slowly is pretty useful but I also think it's pretty useless if you play solo where it's just you against the world basically and their passive skill <coughs> is final act which instantly refreshes your cooldown and enable the use of powers when down normally when you're down you can only crawl around and hope that you're able to hide somewhere until the 30 second I believe uh, countdown has finished at which point you get back up again but the muse can actually continue to be useful and maybe even defend herself to a uh, slight degree from what I can tell you only get more or less one life when you get downed all you can do is crawl around and you're pretty helpless but with the muse power you can actually probably not defend yourself too much but you can support your allies and you can probably use the celerity power to teleport yourself away to some extent and maybe confuse them maybe even hide yourself away in my experience it has been a little bit of a 50 50 if you can hide away because sometimes I can see the enemy crawling around with the heightened senses which uh, shows this uh, outlier I have been able to crawl and hide somewhere until the countdown is over at which point I get back up but that said if you are alone and an enemy downs you or else just comes across you while you're down you're basically fucked they're gonna press F to diabolize which it kills you permanently there's no respawning after that point and it doesn't take that long to do it takes maybe three four seconds five at most and then you're out few people tend to bother with uh, interrupting that unless it's for a teammate and once you get uh, diabolized you're you're out of the game you may as well disconnect because there's no coming back from that perhaps disappointingly there doesn't seem to be any actual benefits to Diablo other than you get a, uh, an increased score. So that's what people are gonna do. Now they do have a couple of uh, videos to show off what the, what the various clans have to offer. But the videos, well take a look here. They aren't very representative of how the actual game is played because you see people walking around they stand still on the ground uh, they don't really react too much to being shot at whereas in the game as far as I can tell there is no walk button so you're always gonna run around no matter what so you can't even blend in on the street or anything but furthermore when a firefight starts to happen the players are not gonna stand still, they're gonna jump all over the place, they're gonna activate powers, it's gonna be complete chaos. And if you're not good with adrenaline, and if you aren't that precise in your firing, you're gonna have a lot of trouble to, to take your enemy down, because you're not gonna be able to hit shit, unless you use powers to make them unable to jump around too much for a little bit every second counts in a battle royale I've noticed but as you can see in the videos it's very not even ideal it's just false advertisement it's bad representation of what's actually in the game 
But hey, it does show off the powers a little bit, so you do get that much out of it. So I said, three clans, two archetypes each. Each clan have one clan discipline in common, and one passive skill, and one activatable skill unique to the archetype. Uh, as far as I can tell, you aren't restricted by other players what they pick. If two people want to play, I don't know, a Prowler or Nosferatu, as far as I can tell, they can do that. So, having uh, a certain option, a player pick a certain option, doesn't lock you away from picking whatever you want yourself. So that out of the way, let's go check out the Elysium. Welcome to the... yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bloodhound Closed Alpha. So here we have it. Even though the game is supposed to be Camarilla vs Anarch, you're always gonna be portrayed as Camarilla, whereas the enemies get portrayed as Anarchs. You get a few customization options, but it's very basic. It is an Alpha, so it's forgivable. What I really appreciate though is that the Nosferatu actually looks like Nosferatu. In V5, they had that problem where the Nosferatu become too pretty, basically. When the amount of disfigurations you get on some characters amount to a couple of scars and a missing arm, it doesn't really look like a Nosferatu anymore. And they're, p they're not really ugly enough where you think of them as a monster, they just look like a crippled war veteran or something like that. And if the Nosferatu aren't ugly, they're not gonna have the motivation or reason to, you know, stick together as the entire clan is built around, the clan unity. The compassion, the sympathy, the understanding of we're the only ones who can look after ourselves because no one else will. We're ugly, we can't be seen on the, si and on the streets because we'd violate the masquerade and if we are seen people are gonna scream and run so we need to take care of each other but if all the Nosferatu have is a couple of scars and maybe some lesser disfigurement that at most amount to it looks like the they fell chic first into a she's greater as a child or something like that People aren't gonna run away or think monsters from that, they're just gonna sneer a little bit like Oh, you're ugly, or oh god, what the hell happened to you, dude? So that's something I appreciate with this game, that the Nosferatu are kept ugly. Now for the actual lore of this, for those who don't know, in the V5 uh, alternate timeline, the intelligence agencies around the either late 2000s or mid 2010s as I recall, they managed to crack Shreknet, the Nosferatu database, somehow. And of course the Nosferatu had information about the kindred and maybe even certain individuals within that world. And while they were quick to plug the leak, the leak nonetheless did happen to a certain extent. So the intelligence agencies and the government are now aware that vampires exist, which has sprung them into action to, well, respond to this revelation. And so begins the Second Inquisition, as the vampires call it, which forms as a loosely aligned uh, gathering of various intelligence agencies, hunter cells, Society of Leopold, which gets uh, recanonized by the Catholic Church to hunt down so-called blank body bo bl <laughs> blank bodies because they don't use the V word for some reason. So they start torching havens left, right and center and probably beyond that too. And then the beckoning happens so the elders who otherwise would uh, be the strongest fighters against this stuff, they start vanishing, fucking off to the Middle East to do I don't know what. And that leaves, well, the Camarilla and Anox 
kinda undermanned. As a result, the Camarilla, they call for the Convention of Prague, where vampires gather all around and they go basically, we are in some deep shit and we can't afford to fuck around. All you anarchs out there, you're getting with the program or we're gonna finish you off, essentially. We're tired of the game, we don't have the patience of it, and we can't really afford it in these times. So what happens then is that the Bruja Archon Theobel, he loads his shotgun with Dragon's Breath and somehow takes out both Hardestat and Jan Petersoon. How the hell he manages to, you know, finish off two Ventru Elders who most likely have maxed out fortitude as an inclined discipline, especially when uh, one of those powers is they can no-sell the first attack they take on any turn, no matter what it is or how hard it hits. Well, I don't know how the fuck he managed to pull it off, least of all in a room full of vampires, some of which would undoubtedly be bodyguards. And even with celerity and the shock, I just don't see him being able to pull that off. The only explanation I can think of is that they're playing some sort of 4D chess where they pretend to be there. But it's kind of a show don't tell moment. If you're not gonna t show us that is the case, all we have to go by is, no, they're dead. Sorry, they're gone. The dragon's breath killed them, somehow. But, think of it what you may, this is what we're working with, so what happens after that is the Camarilla thing announces that the Anarchs have betrayed them, and they call a blood hunt on every Anarch in the city. And for their part, the Anarchs, well, they have always considered the Camarilla to be oppressors and all that shit, and in addition they now want to kill them because they think they, they're dangerous and well they really are dangerous now that they're being backed into a corner by a bunch of capes that they think are out of touch and all that so the war is on in the actual tabletop I think this happened a few years back but this is the game that portrays that conflict so we got several law snippets of uh, conversation here from uh, various individuals. From what I can tell, just the three of them that are in Elysium at this time. I can only assume there's going to be more, but well, we'll have to wait and see. Especially wait and see if there's gonna be more dialogue with them, because at the moment they don't really offer anything. I heard there was gonna be quest in the game, but I haven't seen that so far. But again, it is an alpha, so bear that in mind. We also have some basic information about, well, the vampire state, embrace, final death, the masquerade, the kiss, the traditions that newbies to the universe can read about. The rest of it, it's pretty much just tutorial. Um, showing off the various weapons. Let's see, we have Custos here, the Keeper of Elysium. Greetings, stranger. My name is Custos. I am the Keeper of Elysium. I wish to offer you... I wish I could offer you a proper welcome, but the situation... Well, I didn't have time to read that. I'm a slow reader. Fuck it. So, I'm guessing Custos is a Tremere based by all the books, but I could also see either Ventru given the icon, or possibly a Toreador because he looks fancy enough for the for the job, if you will. Now in Elysium, there's also a bunch of uh, things you can click there, as you can see, that show a little bit of flavor text and hints that there are unlockable things you can see there, which I'm not sure exactly what they are or how to unlock it. But as it stands, it doesn't really offer an awful lot. So they have a bunch of weapons laying around that you can find in the game, but it's nothing you haven't seen before and it's nothing you can't see from the 
main menu over there. So it doesn't really have an awful lot to offer. Let's see. We're gonna go up and talk to Kirill, the Bruja Primogen. Uh, let's see what's over here. Yeah, as you can see, you can check out the model a little bit, but as far as I can tell, you can't really spin them around and... Well, the flavor text doesn't really have an awful lot to offer. There's no pickups in the Elysium, there's no... Well, all that there really is in Elysium is a couple of NPCs that hardly say anything, and of course the other players. Now, you can chat with other players, and I imagine you can technically roleplay, but with people wandering about the place, I don't see much of that going on if people start jumping and all that and the general chat is disabled by default so while you can easily activate it I don't imagine most people are gonna have it that way unless they specifically want to talk to strangers or a friend of theirs uh, that they don't talk to by a discord or something like that. So what you see here is basically what you get from Elysium. It's pretty to look at but it doesn't really have much else to offer. Have the Toriador Primogen here. Talk to her. There's no voice acting in the game either, just to mention it. It's all text based, which is fine really. We don't need much and honestly there isn't much to, for them to say so why bother with that? And yeah, that's basically what you have to see here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, jump into a game at some point and I'm gonna show off a little bit on how the mechanics work and show a little bit of the powers you can wield as a Nosferatu and probably Bruja or Toriador, it depends on how long the matches are. The matches can go on for either a while or not very long at all. One thing I did find that I was disappointed by was that the Battle Royale Fog of Doom is kind of in effect still. After a while the fog is gonna draw closer and closer to the centrum and if you're caught within that you start taking damage. I thought based on what I heard that it wouldn't be a fog of doom where you take damage if you are there but you're gonna see more and more of the second inquisition hunter start lurking in that area. So it becomes increasingly dangerous and maybe they have like, I don't know, a shop or something that can reveal your location if they catch you within the spotlight lamp or something like that. But no, it's a fog of doom and while the second inquisition does exist on the map it's kinda random where you have a couple of guards standing around and there is a chest there which my understanding is they tend to have good loot, but there is no guarantee of that. The weapon type you get could be something else entirely and the noise is probably gonna lure other players around who will either shoot at you or try to steal your loot. So that's a bit of a disappointment I have to say. Nonetheless, let's jump in and see what we got. And here we are. Jumping straight into the game with a Bruja and two Toreador <coughs> in our coterie. I'm starting with a group play because I find those most fun. So we'll be doing two of those and one solo play as to show off. As you could see there, there was a mortal with a resonance right there. When you start the game you can have up to three resonances uh, at one time. And you need to diablerize other players in order to increase your power which allows you to get more. That's something I've discovered as I played. But each resonance give a different uh, ability. Choleric gives uh, more melee damage. Um, Sanguine gives uh, health regeneration. And the other two reduces the cooldown of your powers, both your clan power and your and your archetype power. So you gotta tailor it a bit to how you prefer to play. If you prefer to play as a um, 
stealth sniper with a Nosferatu, then you're probably not gonna be too interested in Choleric Resonance, which is the orange one in this case. But otherwise, hey, go nuts. The more benefits you have, the better. And that does give something to Diablerize other players for. <clears throat> so, it's me, another Toreador, and a Bruja on my team. And it's not just us against one team, it's us against several other teams who are also against each other. You can see up in the top um, right corner there how many players are on the map and how many players have been killed. And as said, there's no respawn. Once you're down, you can come back from that, but if you get diablerized, you're fucked. Or if you get killed... Uh, you get shot down while you're trying to crawl away or whatever. Then you are also gone and... Yeah. <clears throat> so one thing I've noticed with the Masquerade is that... Uh, while you can't use powers in front of mortals, you can climb up buildings and stuff uh, without problem. And if you feed at certain angles... They may not notice you even though they should be within line of sight, so that's a little bit... Uh, oh. Uh, let's see this guy here. Come on. Oh. Of course he has armor. Armor basically works in a way where... Shoot like this, I can't see shit. So armor basically works as extra health. You only get 50 of it, so it's gonna deplete pretty much instantly. But you never know when that extra 50 uh, extra 50 health can come in uh, can come in handy. Let's see, uh, you can see also it's pretty easy to jump around. Oh dear. No. Go away. So you can actually move when you do the healing trick as a muse. But if you get shot at, then you're pre Did he steal my blood? Fuck. Second Inquisition nearby, you can see the laser pop sights uh, pointing around it. Oh shit! You see that one of our, one of my allies, he died there because he got shot down while, while he was um, uh, crawling. He was down, he hadn't been diabolized, but he still got shot down, so he died. And now he's out of the game, there's no way to bring him back. Stay by me this time. Oh fuck. I need to go. I need to What the shit? Fuck no! Diabolized and now I'm dead. So, fuck that game. I'm going for another one. In uh, this one, I'm going to play a Bruja, a Vandal specifically, because I want to try out the uh, Earth Shatter or Earth Shock uh, power and see if you can actually shut down enemies or if it's just like an attack, how that works. <laughs> Let's see here. So we got a... Almost 
transfer to Prout Saboteur. Okay, so a Saboteur, a Prowler, probably, maybe. I wish there was a way to speed up the countdown there. Let's see, I'm gonna be a Vandal. Yeah, the countdown. If the countdown. If people are settled in the choices, just let them click ready. That would be nice so we don't have to spend a couple of seconds of our time waiting. So, two Nosferatu and a Bruma. <coughs> Let's see. Take that. Take that. What do we have? We got a. We got choleric, I am a Bruja, I could use some of that. Thank you. What was that? Oh. So yeah, they pinged some armor over there. It's probably best to stay together, though we are early in the game, so scavenging is not too bad uh, an idea there. Let's see, what do you have? Nothing, be yeah, careful. What do you have? Yeah, I'll take the sword. And here we are united at last. So there's all kinds of weapons and uh, even blood, stuff like that, laying around from uh, other dusted vampires or just Camarilla catches or something. And there's plenty of um, FedEx cars and stuff like that, w which also have weapons in them because, like, that's what the world of darkness see. Mm. Yes, and you see he's using an ability there to basically ping the enemy. Let's see, can I... Oh. There you go. Let's see, where's my axe? Where's my axe? There we go. Oh, okay. That. Down. Oh. Nom nom nom. Okay, so there I got to diabolize someone, and now I get an extra uh, dot you see down in the left corner. I can uh, get one more resonance effect, which uh, boosts whatever kind of resonance I have, making it stronger. So if I. Right now I have a plus 10 melee uh, damage boost from the choleric. If I drink another choleric, I'll get that up to plus 20. Ah, shit. Come on. Let's see. Come on. No. Where? Shit. Okay, well, he's gone. Never mind. Ooh. See the power there again from the prowler. Let's you pinpoint whenever an enemy is near there. Speaking of which. There we go. That guy should really get some armor. Either one of them, really. Let's see... Any enemies around here? No? No? Okay. Or... No? Okay. Yes. So you see, you don't really regenerate health unless you... Well, the Bruja do in the Brute... Um, archetype but everybody else they gotta feed they don't have to necessarily find a mortal they can use a blood syringe or a blood pack to do it or if they have a muse around their power will heal the um, your allies but if you don't have that then you gotta feed in order to get HP back 
which is something that's very easy to forget when you're busy running around and enemies are, well, at every corner. And you see those uh, red crosses on the map, that means the second inquisition is there, guarding a chest of some sort, something in it. What do we got? Uh, I'm too far away to really hit effect. Oh shit! Damn it, how is he so accurate? Yeah, you see, putting a syringe and using a little bit of armor. Could use that. Okay, let's see. Damn. What's his weapon made of? Let's see, come on. I... What? Oh, shit. Used the celerity, celerity trick, yeah. BAM! But I got some of my own. Let's see. Down, but not out. And out you are. Let's see, where are... Oh, sh no. no! No! Fuck. God damn it. Can I crawl away? 37 seconds. Okay, that's... That's a long ass while. Okay, well, rip. Should probably have that, or at least draw it down to 20. 37 or 38 seconds, that's a long time. You see that uh, guy got down, so now his uh, ally is helping him back up quicker. But if you don't guard an ally nearby, you're, yeah, you're basically fucked unless you get really lucky. Which he actually might. He actually might get on. Oh, okay, no, never mind. RIP! This game is hard, and I suck at it. I'm gonna try a Nosferatu Stealth Sniper for the solo run. Okay, let's see. That's the score screen you get. I clipped it out of the earlier one. Here is the current one. I don't care for choleric, I'm gonna be a ranged character. What do you have? Hmm. Well, okay, maybe. I gotta get better at actually using the powers. I don't really bear that. Ooh, yeah. Yes, perfect. I don't really bear it in mind when I'm busy running around because it's so fast paced a game, so I don't really have time to think. Let's see what's over here. Oh, I'll take the katana in case of melee. So I don't really have time to think and that holds me back a lot. Which is probably why I don't tend to play these games or be very good at them. But I still decided I'm gonna play this after a few games so I... So you basically don't have to watch me make a fool out of myself with the excuse of just having tried it for the first time and not knowing what I'm doing. Instead you get to watch me make a fool out of myself without that excuse because I've tried at least a few games so I know the basics of the game and how it works. Let's see... Oh no... I have an epic crossbow. It's probably better than some generic weapons as so we can find something particular no something particularly strong um well there is a legendary chest here or whatever let's see what do we get tommy gun yeah i'll probably take that i already got a precision weapon so I think I'm a little bit better off with something a little more fast paced that I can defend myself with in a firefight. Precision weapons don't really do well when you're being shot at uh, and the adrenaline is pumping and all, ooh, and all that. So um, I better have a different weapon type ready. Is yep. Of course he has armor. Uh, 
Did I get him? I don't see him. Uh, maybe if I... <laughs> By the way, every vampire is gonna have the heightened senses uh, power regardless of clan, which is a little bit weird, but... You know... Gameplay story segregation, I guess. It's no more a big deal than the ability to pop multiple weapons out of my ass when I'm not even wearing a backpack or anything. So you can put on the armor there. So yeah, it's not a big deal and I think it's probably necessary to make the game what it is. Um, and to be fair... <coughs> oh. And to be fair, in V5 they have the Predator uh, type system which makes it easier than ever to pick up basically any discipline you want. Which I have my critiques over, but for video game purposes it does work pretty well. And Heightened Senses is the earliest Auspex power you can get. Or one of them anyway. So it's not uh, too surreal even then Let's see and you can see you can actually enter some of the buildings here <coughs> no, 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 no no okay I'm full I guess um, there are some buildings around you can enter though um, you're probably not gonna linger around buildings too long because as a battle royale you don't wanna you know stay in one place for too long <coughs> I'm being really slow here by crawling around but only because I have the passive there that gives me a bit of invisibility if I'd been uh, I don't know a brew out toyed or something or the other archetype of Nosferatu and I didn't have that I would not be going as slow as I am but for purposes of the stealth sniper I'm gonna see how far I get let's see Bam. more armor okay you see armor really can make a difference so I guess that guy broke the masquerade so I can see ah oh, come on so I can see uh, his movements there through the buildings and everything but a masquerade violation lasts for a minute so it's a bit more survivable than you think, especially compared to being downed or something. Let's see, do we have any? No. I think I'm gonna move on here. Uh, this way. Uh, what do you have? Yes. <clears throat> so let's see what else have we got we're not gonna find too much on the streets most likely but it is arguably safe uh, because the other players are gonna linger most in the um, on the rooftops most likely that plane scared me I thought it was another player for a second. Right, um... What do we have? What do we have? Do we see anybody? No? I'm not sure if you actually can see other players that, but... I don't know. Feels like I'm doing something at least. I already got blood syringes. Nice as it would be to get more. Let's see, move all oh, if I drop down no oh, when <coughs> Where's that coming from? From back no. Let's see what do we is not all right, time to move on on our adventures of 
I don't know, Billy Bob, the cold Nazi sniper. Billy Bob, the cold Nazi sniper. Let's see. The glide is a bit of a dual edged sword, I find, because you can glide really far away and it's really easy to get out of. Uh, or rather to glide down a roof or something. You can get up pretty easily, but uh, did I hear something? No. Oh. What was I saying? Eh, I forgot. Lost my train of thought. Anyway. What do we Let's see? There are three people left on this map right now. Okay, two people left. I stand corrected. So it's me and one Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! No! 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 Oof. Oh god. Oh god. You see, the blood syringes, they do heal you, but they're not quick like a blood bag will be. But the blood bag also takes time to um die up. Oh no 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 good mm. Okay yeah let's see I'm not gonna outrun that but if I maybe still I can lay an ambush here Oh shit no fuck you Okay note to self vanish does not work against the bats so what are my final thoughts on Blood Hunt as of the Alpha here? Well, I still don't really understand who this game is made for because Vampire the Masquerade has never really been an action setting and while it is possible to do it and justify it, I feel like the fans of the series would be more interested in politics, intrigue, making connections with uh, people, um, learning the history, seeing how vampires go through history and all that other stuff. The action is more, usually more of a complementary thing than the main point like it is in Blood Hunt, but to take it uh, for what it's worth on its own, I think that Blood Hunt does the job well enough. I think the Alpha is reasonably polished uh, with the things it features in the... I think I've had one occasion where the wall was a little bit awkward bugged and I think I got stuck on an object once but overall the game runs smoothly, the action it works I'm not a huge fan of the battle royale uh, genre in general uh, because it's more fast paced than I prefer and more adrenaline pumping than I'd like. I prefer more uh, tactical approach with the uh, strategy and stuff. I'm not sure if you can really pull that off because while you can invite up to two friends to form a group or just uh, work really well with strangers on occasion if you stick together. Everybody else in that game is basically a random person. There is no uh, there's no ladder or tournament uh, mode you can enter where you challenge uh, specific people or specific groups which uh, I think might be worthwhile. There's also no um, mode to basically explore the city, which I would have liked. I want to check out the environment, I want to walk around in that city and uh, check out what buildings you can enter, how they look and everything. You can't really do that when you're in the middle of a battle royale and there could be players around every corner as far as you know. I was disappointed with the fog of doom that uh, approaches. I was really hoping that it would be less of that and more of the second inquisition um, starting to crop up a little bit more and not just standing around the chest on certain locations. I imagine it would have been 
much cooler and much more liberating if they were, as said, uh, starting to patrol the streets or uh, perform uh, tactical strikes and stuff like that, or have shoppers uh, roaming around the sky with uh, headlights and stuff that can not only shoot at you, but also sort of give away your location to other players. That would be a way to speed up the end of the match without uh, too much hide and seek while still allowing for movement around the city without blocking it off or basically running out of time. The lack of a respawn is so so to me because on the one hand it makes the matches uh, compact on the one hand but on the other, once you hit that uh, death, you're fucked, you're gone, there's no way of coming back and at that point you may as well just leave the match entirely. I'm not a big fan of that, I would have preferred being able to jump back in and try again better. Um, you can sort of do that, but not quite. And it also means that most of the items around the map aren't really gonna be used all that much, I find. But I could be wrong with that. I do only see what I myself do. The last thing I can think of right now is the technical aspect could use a little work. The key mapping lack uh, the ability to change the controls for movement, so it's always WASD. Whereas that can cause problems on uh, keyboards from various uh, nations like France, Belgium, Russia or just keyboards made f to be more accessible for those who have um, uh, some sort of uh, problem they need a specific keyboard to work it out. I imagine it's also a bit of a pain for left-handed people but I don't have personal insight to that. And I also heard someone complain about the circular cursor. I mean I think personally that's just a subjective thing, it works fine. But I wonder if it wouldn't be a better look if they had the Camarilla Ankh as a cursor but they flip it around so the bottom point becomes the pointer of the mouse. I think that would be a cool alternative and honestly I prefer that myself but that is nitpicky stuff and uh, all in all I think the alpha works fine. As long as they stick to the promise that I've heard that it's going to be free to play, no payments for anything other than cosmetic items, and you also get uh, all the clans, etc., then I think Blood Hunt works fine as a time killer for. Well, the matches tend to last about 10 minutes each, give or take, with some uh, variation depending on how quick you die. I've had a match where I get killed almost instantly, but for the most part the matches tend to be around 10 minutes each. So if you if you want something action heavy and uh, you have 10 minutes to kill or something, I think uh, Blood Hunt works fine. The lore around uh, is mostly just readables, but I think it can work as a sort of seed to grow further interest in new people and then whether or not that will become a bigger thing because as said Vampire the Masquerade has more politics in it than it does action uh, to your average group in my experience we'll see how that goes if nothing else though it is highly possible to just make an action game in uh, the tabletop so if anybody comes in to the universe through Blood Hunt and then decide I wanna try out a game on tabletop, but I obviously came for the action, so let's focus on the action. I think that's entirely possible. So those are pretty much my thoughts. I do have another day or two to try out the alpha, and after that we'll see when the release happens. It is worth uh, pointing out of course that it is an alpha so things are subject to change or further development among other things i think i heard that they were going to add a or rather add the ventrue 
to the game by the time of uh, a proper launch which um, presumably has two archetypes of their own and how they play out well we'll see but yeah all in all it's a decent game it's an odd game given the setting but it is a decent game and I think those who either have time to kill or or even just mildly curious about it don't really have much to lose by trying it out because again it is going to be free cosmetics aside do I recommend it? I think so I'm not again the hugest fan of uh, battle royale but I don't see anything to lose by giving it a fair chance to sell you I'm gonna be mildly content with the game even though my personal preference also is outside of its genre and I do foresee that I will probably play a couple of matches uh, here and there after launch when I need to kill some time or I just feel like running around and beating the shit out of people or trying thereof as I get shot to high hell I'm uh, probably hoping most for more interaction both with the NPCs and uh, options for interacting with other players especially with that uh, ability to walk around in the city without having to fear being shot at just to explore it around or use that as a not an Elysium but more as a um, social gathering point I think that would uh, really give the, give it the roleplay value that uh, the Elysium otherwise suggests that is possible especially if you can control the lobby of who gets in and out of each phase the instant of the city that way you can filter out the random people and people who just wanna run around and climb walls or jump off towers or whatever the hell they're doing so all in all I didn't come in with much in the ways of expectations but I did come out with a well I did come out feeling content with it let's say that and I hope for the for the best of its uh, future after all the better the game the more the Vampire the Masquerade community has to gain for it so those are my thoughts thank you for watching and sticking around listening to my crappy attempt at editing together my thoughts here and uh, we'll see what the future brings have a good one